What's up, everyone? Welcome to the 442nd episode of the Pokemon Podcast. First episode of 2021. I am your host, SBJ, here. Uh, this is a podcast about Pokemon. Uh, Greg is here. It's been, what, 10 years? Of like podcasting? Yeah, yeah, sure. And you're like, it's uh, a thing that I I'm thought, doing right I, well, now. I was like, new year, maybe we do something a little different. Look, if we're going to do something different, we have to plan that. Like, something different on the fly never works. But it is 2021. Welcome to 2021. Will, also here, back from uh, traveling. East Virginia. East oh, Virginia, man. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, doxing me there. I don't know. I I honestly feel that 2021 is the year of Relicanth. I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying no. I'm saying no. Look, <laughs> the, the main <laughs> argument I have for why 2021 is the year of Relicanth because numerous times doing Dynamax adventures, the new craze that all the kids are into this year. From last year, carryover. Carryover. You constantly, over and over, don't sleep on Relicanth. That thing will carry you through to the end of any Dynamax adventure. It is strong. It, it'll get you where you need to go. I'm, I mean, I'm for it. The Turtonator crew Ugh. pointing out that it's grass water and then it should be a fire type this year has won me a little bit with that argument i still <sighs> like ear of the sock though like sock it to it but the problem is is Can that number one you're mispronouncing off? it wishy-washy's out the window go on not interested gone. not interested. the problem is number one you're mispronouncing sock number two <laughs> when i say sock you get mad sock has a partner sock has throw right Maractus yeah. didn't have a buddy. Quillfish didn't have a buddy. Uh huh. Sawk's got a buddy. Relicanth? Relicanth has no. Not well, only. I mean, Turtonator doesn't have a buddy either. <sighs> the Turtonator is just. I, I, Why I, would you I, bring I, up Turtonator when you could bring up Torkoal? I mean, no, I'm no, fine with Torkoal, no. but also, nobody likes no, Torkoal. I, well, turtles are gross. <laughs> <laughs> The thing about Relicanth is it is so exclusive that they, like, banished it to New Zealand. That's, like, the rarest of the standalone dude. What if it's the year of the Soul Rock? And we are oh, like Martin, where we just, we pretend that we're doing something for 2021, but we're really not. Like, 2021 is just a big build-up for no payoff. Well, that's Soul Rock in a nutshell, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a show. Not a lot of Pokemon news, as I believe Niantic and DNA and seems like everyone else in the entire world are still not working. I'm sure they all come back to work. I think I think a lot of people have I been mean, off. I've I've been off for two weeks, so... But we got some news. We'll make it through, of course. Let's start with the easy news. Uh, the raid rotation in Sword and Shield has happened once again. Gigantamax Snorlax and Gima Gigantamax Duraludon will be featured in January's Max Raid Battles. And I guess, big question mark if they're going to do a weekend of something getting promoted. Because they haven't missed one since July? Well, then I say yes. Yes, they will do <laughs> a weekend of something being promoted. Hey, maybe 2021 is giving up on Sword and Shield. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> For remakes. More Sword and Shield news. Uh, there is a special... It's not that special. Uh, there's a special Pikachu you can download up to January 15th, I think. Oh, I gotta do that. Oh, I gotta yeah. do that right now. Let me, I, I, yeah. Hmm. It is the Kaibo Pikachu, or Kibo, I think I was saying it wrong. I think somebody said it's Kibo, because the I is the E. Where's e. Andrew? It's Kibo. Yeah, Kibo. There's no code needed. You just have to connect to Mystery Gift, and then do the connect via internet, 
And then you have until January 15th. It is a Cherish Ball Pikachu. It has the special ribbon. Um, and it knows the moves Celebrate and Wish, which are exclusive or obviously Pikachu can't learn those moves normally. All right. Bobby, pause the podcast right now. <laughs> get your Switch and get the Pikachu. All right. Not going to happen. I, I said his name. Yeah. I spoke to him on the podcast directly wow. and said, wow. do that. And it's like, oh, I'll get to it. And wow. then what happens every time? Bobby's wife hit pause <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> Tell Bobby to get his switch and get the Pikachu. Friends of Bobby, stop the podcast. All Send folks text. in Southern California, triangulate on Bobby. <laughs> Tell him to press pause. And get the Pikachu. Uh, I'm really glad Game Freak went to space to announce brand new games and to yeah, that uh, announcement was so great. It was it was really fantastic. I'm so excited that they're remaking Galar <laughs> <laughs> to fix the trees this time. It's the update and new that I've been waiting for. Did, 2020. <laughs> did either of you watch the uh, sunrise? Nope. I woke up and then at 10 o'clock was like, oh, dang, <laughs> that was today. I thought about it two hours late. I mean, it's on YouTube. Uh, it's like a two hour video. You can go back and watch it. I The Pokemon section of it was about like two minutes. It wasn't terribly long. Maybe it was like four minutes. But it was the the astronaut they featured on the Kibo.space website. I can't remember his name. I'm sorry. Um, and then the it was like a... It, unfortunately, it was not a Pikachu plush, which it would be really great to see a plush floating around in space. It was just a like 3D AR rendered Pikachu that said Pika a couple times. And then <laughs> a Rayquaza showed up because, as Greg and I discussed last week, Dialga and Palkia do not make sense in space. <laughs> <laughs> While Palkia can control space, it's not outer space. <laughs> it is the theory of space. Um, well, the dimensions. Yeah, the, the dimensions, dimensions right. Pr pretty much, Di uh, P sorry, did I say Dialga? Palkia. Palkia is just a giant ruler. Is really like, like a tape measure. <laughs> uh, it's more like graph paper. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Because it does, you know, well, but it also has the, the y-axis as well. It's, you it's, know, it's like a graphing is, calculator. Wait, which one is time? Dialga is time? Dialga is time, because it has dial in its name. So Dialga got ripped off because Palkia has got the X, Y, and Z dimensions. Yeah. Pokemon Z confirmed. And yep. Dialga just has the fourth dimension of time. Hmm. So a 3D animated Rayquaza showed up for a hot second. And when I say hot second, I mean like 20 seconds of like screen time. <laughs> they went to the panel of like celebrities or um, judges. I don't know. They think of like, I'm so, it's so hard to explain this just for the silly thing that they did. But imagine like eight people sitting on very high stools, like talking in between the space stuff. Mm -hmm. At one point, after the Pikachu floats by and the Rayquaza shows up, there's, like, a guy sitting on one of his high stools, and he holds up a Nintendo Switch with Pokemon Sword <laughs> and Shield, and then he looks down at a piece of paper and then reads, <laughs> like, the bullet points <laughs> of Sword and Shield, and then says there's a Pikachu available, and that's it. Like, it was exactly what we said it was going to be, which is... An ad. It was an ad for Pokemon Sword and Shield that was in collaboration with the space event, and they gave a free Pikachu out. And you, to be fair, I wasn't expecting anything. I was expecting to see a Pikachu floating in space. I got that. <laughs> I was not expecting a download for a Pikachu. But of course, the internet's not never happy, and they were upset that it's not a shiny Pikachu. I don't know. The, this is oh, you can't. It's an audio gracious. podcast. I'm moving my hands. I would argue that a special ribbon Pikachu is more rare than a shiny because how many special ribbon Pikachus do you have? I know the answer. It's zero. Now you have one. 
<laughs> Speaking of getting ripped off, uh, this was sent in by Kevin from our Slack community. Uh, we forgot to cover this the last couple weeks. It's not really brand new news. But there is a giant life-size Apple 10 plush that arrived in Japan. They are very large. Not that large. Like, not as large as the Zera Aura life-size plush or the Furret life-size plush because Apple 10 is not actually that big of a Pokemon. I had to do a little digging here. So on the Japanese Pokemon Center, it is 8,500 yen, which I think is like $75 USD, which isn't too bad. Uh, it's, you know, it's a lot cheaper than the $500 Mareep plush. It's a large boy, though. Very How do you huggable. know it's a boy? Appletons could be ladies as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm buying the boy version. <laughs> so I can put them on my couch next to my cats and go, look at those boys. <laughs> You're a fool. Yeah, he's. Uh, they're pretty large, and uh, we have no clue if it's coming to the United States. I guess the Marie plush eventually arrived, but the Furret plush did not. I suppose you could import it. You could probably find a somebody in Japan to walk to the Pokemon Center, buy it to you, and put it in a box and send it. But I would suppose that would be very expensive shipping wise because of the size yeah. of the box. Yeah, that's real heavy. Here's the $200 YouTube video idea. You buy it, and then you cut into it like an apple pie. <laughs> it's like buying one of those iPhones and smashing it. You're just doing do, it for do the Do you views. know Appleton's... Wait, that's the... Okay, that's not Flapple. Okay, yes. Appleton's Pokedex entry literally says that children would rip off strips of its back. Yeah. To eat as snacks. Did you know that? That's sick. Yeah, it's terrible. It's it's the slowpoke tail thing, or the far yeah. thing, except that it's socially acceptable. Well, I mean, it can probably regrow it back. I'm assuming. Okay, so let me rip off strips of your back as snackers <laughs> and see. I'm you not can a probably pie. grow that back. No, uh, well, I'm, I'm not a pie yeah, nor exactly. a dragon. Kind of look like a pie to me. If I was a pie, it would be. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> if you were a pie. You would be, what is like the most boring lemon meringue right there? <laughs> what? <laughs> no one likes lemon meringue. It's too what? tangy. Who's your favorite pie? Lemon it's... meringue is delicious. It's All right. just very right. plain. Pie. Take it back. I'll be the lemon meringue then. No, you can't be lemon meringue. Pick your own pie. Mm, I do like what apple pie, pie though. What? Yeah, but that's Appleton. Yeah, that's true. Can I be like a chocolate pie? Yeah, you can be French silk. Yeah, now we're talking. Yeah, that's not. Mm, what? Mm, it's not, that's a pie. I mean, theoretically. I mean, if lemon meringue's a pie, French silk is a pie. True. We covered this last week, but we'll go through it again just because it's coming up. Uh, the South Pokemon Go Live, the Unova, Unova. They say it very fast in the anime. Always like that. I don't know why. They never slow it down. The Unova event is coming up. Starts on Tuesday, January 5th. Goes until J January 10th. It's a five-day event. Snivy will be shiny during this event. Although, I'm doubting it's going to be community day odds. Probably just going to be whatever the thing it is. One yeah, in 450. Yeah. So, Snivy, Tepig, Oshawa, Lillipup, Hurtier, Blitzel. Hurtier? Oh, they did say Lillipup before it. Uh, Herdier, Blitzel, Rock and Roller, Drillbur, Scraggy, Timepole, Venipede, Trubbish, Gothita, Solosis, Ferrosseed will all be appearing in the wild. If you're lucky, you may encounter Shiny Snivy. All right. I've got two issues to bring up. Pokemon, okay. since we're in the Pokemon Go zone right now. Number one, in the recording of the previous program, I cannot believe this is how you can tell I wasn't here. <laughs> I cannot believe that this interchange went through uh, when, when, what happened. Countdown to Kanto event. I wonder why they're going backwards in generation order. It's kind of like it's a countdown. Really? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that problems with this one. show. <laughs> yes. A lot of problems, especially when I'm not here to keep everybody in line. Jake, you failed me. Number two, I want to buy the Kanto, Kanto event ticket. It does not appear anywhere in my Pokemon Go. Did you already anywhere. buy it? 
I did not already. I bought the Mr. Mime ticket, but I did not buy the Canto ticket. And if I did, where would I look to see if I already bought it? Uh, it would be in your items. It would be under your raid passes. Under my... I have like 400 raid passes. How am I going to find anything under there? It'll be like a color. It'll be like blue or pink or something. I... No. I... I mm, here we go. No, that's shop. That's not where I'm going. I'm going to bag items. It would be by your raid pass slash remote raid pass slash premium battle pass. All right. This is... I have rare candy, raid pass... Remote Raid Pass, Premium Battle Pass, Star Piece. I thought you Rocket did buy it. I thought you had to, like, reinstall the app. That was for the Mr. Mime event. Oh. Well, then again, it says right here, ticket, a ticket to access a special event on February 20th, 2021. I guess I did buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Dag. Well, that's what happens when you're in your late What color is it? Is it pink? 40. Blue. It's dark blue. Oh, it is blue. Have we decided if we're going to Texas or not? Uh, I think the decision was that we're not going to Texas. Oh, okay. Uh, There will be event-exclusive field research with that reward. Stardust leads to encounters with Pokemon such as Snivy, Tepig, Oshawott, Ferrossied. Snivy, Tepig, Oshawott, Timber, Dwebble, and Clink will appear in one-star raids. Herdier, Tranquil, Excadrill, and Amoongus will remind you never to do three-star raids. Um, And then Genesect holding the burn drive will be appearing, uh, of course... No shiny Genesect this event. And a special... Wait, when is that new raid Pokemon coming? Mega Charizard will become more powerful that week. Oh, that must have been the other blog post. I think there's a there's a new raid Pokemon coming, but I think it's next week. I don't think it's this week. And then the Sinnoh event starts on Tuesday, January 12th. Remakes confirmed. Yeah! Finally. I'm in it. Finally. Which remakes? They just forgot during the space event. Do you think they're going to remake for the 25th anniversary? They're going to remake Kanto again? I think they're only... going to make it playable on the Switch. We can only hope. <laughs> well, there, w- there was that rumor that they were doing like the Master Collection. Oh, right. Which I'd be in, I'll, I'd be I'll, 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 I'll say it's a pretty weak rumor, but I'll, I'll, well, maybe we haven't talked about this, but... Uh, the concept of the Master Collection, I'm doing air quotes here, <laughs> remember we're in rumor territory, was that it was going to be a Switch version of red, gold, and ruby on one cartridge, so those three games, and then blue, silver, and sapphire on another cartridge, and that it would be, gosh, I wanted to say it was between 40 and $60. But you would get those three games on a cart, and it would be a master collection, and that was pretty much the the rumor. <laughs> and I guess that's probably fine. I guess I don't know why why, why they just why why they should do individual cartridges and make us pay like thirty dollars for each one <laughs> for each, which they they'll package them all together, thirty dollars each, eighty nine ninety nine for three. Yeah, I, th- I I wouldn't be, like, upset if it came out. As somebody who has recently, in the last, like, year, played all of those games, I- I- I'm definitely not in the market to go back to Red and Blue anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm not either, but that doesn't stop Especially when, happening. like, if you have the means, like, Fire Red, Leaf Green, I think, is, like, a better version of those games. And then if if you are a Pokemon fan and you just played Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, you're probably one of the many people that have gotten your full scoop of Kanto. I mean, I think I've played at least three different versions of Kanto at this point. I'm trying to think of all the ones, because there was the first ones. Uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green. Let's Go Eevee, Let's Go Pikachu. I don't. I think that's the only options. Are those it? Are those the three big remakes of Kanto? Yeah, I mean they put. I, I think the thing that people always bring up too is they put red and blue on the virtual console. Yeah, but they also put yellow on the virtual console and and gold and silver and silver crystal. And, and they wait. They waited. Ooh. They waited until I don't people feel like those bought are... gold and silver to put crystal out at a later date. Here's how's about this for a a underground dark theory they make all no 
that doesn't work. Dag nabbit. I was going to say they make the uh like Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games available on the Switch through the Nintendo Online Service Virtual oh, Console. Yeah. But there's no Game Boy Game Boy Advance Virtual Console. It's only Nintendo and Super Nintendo. Yeah, there's not even Nintendo 64 stuff, right? <sighs> no. No. Dag and I wish there was. Man, Gen well, 3 is I know it's your favorite region greg but original mm-hmm. gen 3 is real hard to go back to all of them are really hard to go back to i tried to go back to yellow i really love that game and i got halfway through it before i'm like i can't i can't play this yes i, <laughs> it's I can't so do this. frustrating <laughs> it is so frustrating to go so far backwards um and i have since played emerald many times after that and it is what was considered fun gameplay back then because it was your only option does not translate to fun gameplay now. You know, it's it's the it's the classic wow conundrum. Like I remember it was fun because I had no other option, but the minute something was better, I was happy to jump. It's the same thing. Like I having all of those restrictions of those old games, trying to play them now, it's so frustrating to me because I want to do things faster or in a different way, or have the quality of life changes, and they just aren't there. And it's such a frustrating experience for me. I think what's going to happen is when we are eventually in retirement homes and enjoying a slower pace of life, we're going to turn to those really slow-paced, heavy grind games and be like, all right, now I have the time and patience for this garbage. If there was like a reason to go back and play them like the cool thing about crystal like when crystal came out there was really nothing to play pokemon wise because i believe crystal was after ultra sun ultra moon i think i think so so and and you know ultra sun ultra moon was november crystal came out i believe in in february so a lot of casual pokemon players They got their fill of Pokemon, and then they got different games for Christmas, or different games came out in January, and then Crystal came back, and people like old Pokemon games. Nothing wrong with that. And so they came back for Crystal, and Crystal seemed like a, not like a big event, but like a a little bump of like everyone's talking about Pokemon again. Um, And that was cool. But at least when you went back to Crystal, or even the older games, you... You could, tra- one, transfer those Pokemon to Pokemon Bank, um, which I would assume if there was ever, if this rumor was remotely true and there was a Master Collection or something of old games being put on the Switch, eventually, I would assume that would be the case. If they can make, if they made it work before, they can make it work again. Oh, yeah. Everything goes into Pokemon Home now. Yeah. But the there, cool- there's no going forward without that connectivity. Even Pokemon Shuffle goes into Pokemon Home at this point. <laughs> but the cool oh, thing I about wish, like the shuffle. older games on the virtual console, like Crystal and stuff, is if you caught a Pokemon, you would at least know that it would be guaranteed hidden ability. And mm-hmm. so it was like, oh, well, I could go back to an older game. Yeah, nostalgia. Oh, well, look at b- b- these gym leaders. Oh, Jasmine's here. Uh, <laughs> but you're like, oh, at least I caught a Mareep, and now it's a hidden, b- a b- hidden ability Mareep. But Sword and Shield kind of knocked down all those barriers to be like, well, it's pretty easy to get hidden ability or not hidden ability or timid or jolly or adamant or perfect IVs. It I kinda, know, they made it too easy. Yeah, too easy. So there would have to be, I don't know, there, I feel like there would have to be something. Uh, the other reason to go back to Crystal was they put the Celebi thing in it, which was excluded from the yeah. American stuff, uh, which was, which I think was pretty smart. And they gave you the ability to shiny hunt Celebi if you cared to do so. So they they gave you kind of like two reasons to go back to Crystal. One, like easier hidden ability guaranteed Pokemon. And like that Crystal, uh, that Celebi event that you could experience. That, that doesn't exist in Gold and Silver. That was specifically a Crystal event. I guess they could put like... No, the Deoxys event was for Emerald, right? It wasn't for Ruby and Sapphire. Yeah, it was for Emerald. They can get away with putting out old games and doing nothing to them. <laughs> maybe maybe I'm just not in the market for them. I'm not sure why I would need to go back to Emerald as I 
or not emerald ruby and sapphire as i just played them pretty recently and well that's you you play too much pokemon yeah that's my real problem <laughs> yeah that's true i should really like start a podcast or something where i talk about how much pokemon i play no see this is the problem you need to do the opposite of that you just need to like take a six month vacation from pokemon play i don't know what's a good alternative to pokemon mm, and then you'll come back fresh no would you stop with your Yu-Gi-Oh? Yu-Gi-Oh! No, not allowed. Well, I, I have like the I have I've had some time off of Twitch because uh, I wanted to spend time with Irene and stuff, and she was cooking dinner, and I thought, well, like the Players Cup is coming up, uh, maybe I should do a couple practice matches. So I'm on the couch. I think it was the first time ever since Sword and Shield came out. I'm playing Pokemon on an actual TV because normally I'm playing it in front of my, you know, stream setup. She's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm just practicing for the Players Cup. And she's like, you're working. Turn this off. And I was like, oh, wow. But I'm just playing Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's take a break. And then when we come back, uh, we're going to revisit an old article. So we will be. <gasps> oh, no. Into the Wayback Machine. We will be right back. I mean, I mean, as those of us born in the 70s say, you know, that shiny and a coupon will get you a discount on a shamrock shake. <laughs> Hey, Happy New Year if you're listening. Well, I guess if you made it this far and you want to support the show, this is a good time to start since the year is fresh, the month is fresh. You enjoy listening to It's Super Effective. I do this for a living and uh, my I pay my bills because of you all supporting via Patreon. Patreon.com slash P-K-M-N-C-A-S-T. Same as the Twitter, the Twitch, the YouTube, all that. Or just ISE.cash, whichever works for you. Uh, I guess some people don't know this, but we make no money off the podcast. It doesn't make it doesn't matter if we get ten listens or a thousand listens or a hundred thousand listens. We get zero dollars. It doesn't work like YouTube or or anything like that because we don't run any ads in the show. All of the money from the podcast is just from Patreon. So if you would like to support the show, you get a ton of benefits. You get updates of upcoming stuff early. You get access to our Slack community. If you join Patreon at a $5 a month level, you get access to our whole back catalog of anime episodes that you can listen to at any time with more coming later this year. If you got deep wallets, you can get your name said at the end of the episode, which some people <laughs> like, I guess. But anyways, if you're listening and you are thinking about supporting, if you want to support what I do here, ISE.cash or Patreon.com slash P-K-M-N-C-A-S-T will get you there. And also, Patreon rolled out a feature where if you decide to subscribe for an entire year, you get a discount on top of that. I don't know what the discount is off the top of my head, but you save money. Anyways, thank you for listening. If you can remember the URL, cool. If not, it will be in the podcast show notes. I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode, and Happy New Year. We are back from our break. Before we get to our uh, retrospective article. <laughs> Where we go to the Wayback Machine, bringing it back. Any update for you on the Masters end, Greg? Like, how bad my polls have been? <laughs> I mean, is that what we want to talk about? Because they've been awful. Have you done the uh, N-, N event at all? I have not started it yet. I did the N event up until Fighting N because I need to have a 125 team and blah, 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 blah. And, and I'm like, nah. Um, it's The storyline is interesting. Like, it's interesting. It's an interesting 
add on to the end of what happened in those series, like a lot of these things are. Um, so there's some cute moments in there. Uh, I I haven't done the New Year's Eve events, um, but I, I guess there's a, a a moment where you call Lance out on Gyarados not being a dragon. Oh, that's is, cute. Which makes me laugh, because his response is... Ha, 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 not all dragons are dragon type Pokemon. This is right. Ah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I'm with you, dude. He's not wrong. <laughs> I, mean, I guess it's one one of the good things I will say. One of the good things they do in Masters, which is not their pull system, not their banner system, and not the actual gameplay, is who's ever writing their characters for the storylines has these people down. Like, I don't think there's been a storyline that I haven't been interested in, found charming, or been like, wow. Like, the, even even the fact that, like, Cyrus is like, I still hate people, and I still think the world should be destroyed, but I guess I'll hang out here. At least they sort of acknowledge that whole weirdness, and they're just like, this is who he is. There's a, There's a number of things I think are really... The writing in that game is really good. It's probably one of the only things that keeps me coming back is I enjoy what they do with the characters, while, whereas like the game doesn't ruin me much in my pulls. I've I've pulled on every banner every time. I have not gotten any any of the, I've so far out of ten pulls got two five stars that weren't uh, weren't the people on the banner. I always post my recaps of what I pull on YouTube and my last video. <laughs> I don't think I pulled anything good. Spoiler. My luck has also been bad. Although they did give 3,000 gems for the new year from logging in. Yep. I think N is available till close to the end of the month. And then Lance and Lily are available until the 13th. I don't know that the Lily and Rabambi is any good. I just want that pair. Yeah, they're very cute. They're very cute. I well, really want that pair, and but I have not gotten it. Full disclosure: I am partnered with DNA, uh, but I, I will are say you the, really now. <laughs> I will say the main <laughs> reason I come to the game is because I do like to collect the characters, but uh, I I like getting one of every character, and I missed out on Erica. I never got her. Now I got to uh, wait a whole year. You have to wait that, a whole year. Well. Assuming she's coming back. It could be like Dragalia Lost, where they have Christmas in July, and the Christmas events came back in July. Oh, uh, interesting. There was there was a question I saw floating around the internet, I won't say where, of whether Pokemon <laughs> Masters will even last till next Christmas. And the only reason that is brought up is because Pokemon Duel lasted, I want to say, almost two years. And Rumble World, or whatever it was called, only lasted a year. <laughs> Magikarp Jump was never like a, well, maybe to some people it was a lifelong game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am a I'm jump lifer. Uh, but the, I still jump every day. But I think, I think Masters is doing, or has been doing, better than at least, well, anyth anything in the entire world was doing better than Rumble. <laughs> yeah. I think there's still more people playing it. I don't think it's as much, but that's pretty normal. But I think it'll be around for a while. I mean... Yeah, I don't see why it would end before its second anniversary, especially with this year being the 25th year. I think, if anything, yeah. come February, they would probably do some sort of event to correspond with the 25th anniversary, and to probably, that would be their big push of, like, Okay, we need to do something because Pokemon is on the brain for a mm -hmm. lot of people. And how do we put butts into Masters? I mean, and I think Masters <laughs> is a sufficiently popular game yeah. that it's yeah, I mean, the fact that those other games died out is because nobody was playing them. Right. Right? People are actually playing Masters and spending money on it. So, yes. I mean, yes, it's not making as much money as Pokemon Go, but, but what is? Exactly. Last thing before we move on, and I'll try. I always try, try to keep our masters talks under ten minutes. Otherwise, <laughs> you got ten minutes to knit or crochet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It. Or um, cross stitch. Did Ooh, you? Are people gonna cross stitch in twenty twenty one? Is that a thing that's gonna come back? Hey, what do you mean? It never went away, dude. 
We have I had just, people who appeared on this program who are adamant cross. You need to be in our crafty scrafty group in the Slack yeah, community. Yeah, but I'm not crafty or scrafty. You can still see everyone's beautiful mm. cross stitch projects. True. I'll, I'll jump in. It'd be one of the many things that I'm like, oh, I have to read this. <sighs> Last question for you, Greg. Did you yes. notice the difference between um, every four minutes versus every six minutes for the refresh? Uh, no, because I literally play once a day. Okay, so you're probably... Why is this a question for Greg? Maybe I started playing Pokemon Masters. (laughs) Did you? No. (laughs) You did try it, though. You did try it. You didn't like the uh, battle. There's a lot of things I don't like about it. The thing is, is that I'm over the stamina limit. I'm keeping myself at uh, 796 so that I fill back up to the top in case something comes along that I really want to do. So I, I, I don't regenerate. So I... I wouldn't see it. That's I used to play that way before they'd stopped giving us the plethora of stamina. But now I feel like... So I normally play twice a day. I normally... When I wake up in the morning after I'm done checking my email, and if there's still a cat laying on my feet and I can't get out of bed, <laughs> which is every morning, I log, log into Masters, and then I try not to take the 200 stamina... Because I don't want it to, because I want it to replenish. So then I just spend it on something, like literally anything. Normally, it's like, oh, I don't have to, time to think. I'll just, you know, do sink orbs, or I'll just do uh, soda plus red minus two, four, six, eight, whatever the sodas are called. And then at night, before I go to bed, I log in to see how much stamina I have, and then to cash in the two hundred because that only lasts twenty four hours. And then try to spend that so then when I wake up in the morning, it's refreshed. Mm. That's how normally I play. And I do notice that, well, obviously, (laughs) I mean, you (laughs) you didn't need the game to be out to, like, calculate how much stamina you get versus six minutes versus four minutes. It's more full more often. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't, I don't play any of my gacha games, like, down down to zero unless there's some... Some massive event where I have to get to the end to get the reward, and then I will. But then usually I only play once a day to get to get my login and do stuff. I I tend not to think of these games apart from the one time that they forced me to log in. Probably because I'm paying, I, I just play too many of them. And so I sort of cycle through them, and then I'm like, okay, I need, I need to do something else with my life. I will say it's a lot harder for me to play more than once when I'm at home and I have more compelling things that I want to play. Like, I could be spending time playing this, or I could be playing Oxygen Not Included, or Sword and Shield, or Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, so I just, if I was trapped in my office on a conference call that was boring, <laughs> like, when I go back to work, I might play it more, because I might be back on, on calls again. All right, I wanted to uh, revisit an old article. <sighs> This is uh, from U.S. Gamer. We did talk about this on the show. This was published June 13th, 2019. So, about 18 months ago. What is the title of this? Uh, I don't think that... there. It doesn't look like there is a title. <laughs> <laughs> the I guess the title is The Pokemon Sword and Shield Interview. Quote, We knew at some point we weren't going to be able to keep indefinitely supporting all Pokemon. End quote. We talked to Game Freak about battle potential of Dynamax, the decision to narrow down the number of available Pokemon, and to move into a new era. Um, so we won't go over this whole interview, but I remember we we covered an old interview a couple mm-hmm. months ago, and a lot of people came out of the woodwork. That's an expression, right? Yes, yes. that is an expression used correctly. Ooh. I'm, I'm quite impressed. 2021. <laughs> I get <laughs> we've grown. We're beating around the bush once again. No, we're not. We're not. <laughs> we had it. We had it. Such high like hopes s- crashed sand, and dashed. Like sand through our fingers. <laughs> so uh, at this point, this is this is before Sword and Shield even came out. This is June yep. 13th. Um, this is a couple days after the E3 announcement. So before we dive in, let's kind of... Okay, before we dive in, why are we going back to this? <laughs> why? One, because it's a slow news week. 
Has anyone told Japan that we're revisiting this article? Good. Did anyone tell America that they launched Pikachu into space? <laughs> <laughs> Did they? So there was no plushie shoved out of an airlock? Nothing? No, there wasn't. Nobody said Pikachu is sus and ejected him and tossed him? Pikachu is sus. That is the slogan of 2021. Pikachu is kind of sus. Kind of. Well, I, I actually dug up this article to argue with somebody on the internet about. Oh, good. And you're dragging us into your argument? No, because I... <laughs> oh. No, no. That, that, I the, mean, the answer the, is yes. The argument's irrelevant. I, but when I, when I dug up the article, because I was like... Because the article... Specifically, I was looking for the interview where they talked about how Max Raid battles in Sword and Shield and Max Raid battles in Pokemon Go were developed at the same time, which this article does state. Okay. And then I was rereading the article earlier this week, and I was like, wow, there's." it's kind of interesting how we had thoughts and our minds went to a, d- a bunch of different places, and then Sword and Shield came out, and now it feels like... This is a brand new article again, even though I've read it probably a hundred times before Sword and Shield came out. So I wanted to I wanted to revisit it uh, because now we've had two DLCs. Sword and Shield has been out for a year. We're a month away from the 25th anniversary, and so I thought it would be fun. Um, as I figured, this week of news would be terribly short. So I'm going to make Will be Amori here. Okay, <laughs> and I will be Shigeru Amori. And sure. I will I will be the interviewer. Which one are we going with? Which question? Uh, let's go with the Pokemon Go one, which is r- second question below the video. It goes, and for Max Raids, did you look to Pokemon Go for inspiration for raid battles that are in that? And what do you feel you're going to do with Sword and Shield that will take Max Raid battles to the next level? I think both features were being developed around the same time. Both the Pokemon Go raid battles and and Max raid battles while we were working on development of the game. Really with a similar goal of having more ways for players to kind of play with each other. Specifically, what we wanted to do with Max raid battles was give a cooperative battle experience. You can always battle against friends but that kind of PvP-oriented competitive play can be intimidating to some players. We wanted to offer an experience where you can easily get a friend and have them join you on something where you can challenge a really strong opponent and have a good time. Hey, so how does that hold up? Uh, Having a good time... (laughs) That's... I mean, I've had some good times. I've had a lot of good times with raids. I've had a lot of good times. Like... The really challenging part one is is only when they did the Mewtwo stuff and some Dynamax Adventures. Otherwise, it was pretty much well, just four people. Have doing you done the thing. Dynamax Adventures though? I mean, yeah. people are bad at Pokemon. <laughs> no, see, that's the thing, right, Greg? You have to take this from the perspective of somebody who doesn't think Pokemon all the time every mm. week. There are plenty of people who just don't realize how tough and impressive Relicanth is. That's true. Oh, here we go. That's true. I mean, I have... No sock. This is a a small sample of the Pokemon world, but, you know, I have a bunch of people watching me play Pokemon every day. Like, they're in my Twitch chat, they're they're chit-chatting, I'm I'm playing Pokemon every day. You know, no, no shade to them, but when I do max raid battles with them, there are just basic battle things that they don't know and th- it's fine there's like 800 some moves and there's 600 pokemon available but when they're in a battle and they use something like steel roller and there's no terrain up well like steel roller is going to fail it needs terrain and you wasted a whole move and that move could be <laughs> like the I-, I have done i you. i have done landorus Look, I don't know what is in Max Raid Battles. I only know at the end that Landorus appears. <laughs> if there are other Pokemon that appear at the end of a Max Raid Battle, I don't know who you, they are. I only know Landorus. You also need to own up to the person who doesn't pay attention and has brought a Storm Drain Pokemon and then complains why so-and-so isn't using Water Gun all the time <laughs> when they are, and your Pokemon is the one that's eating it up. But You need to own your own behavior, SBJ. Look... 
If I have an opportunity to pick Maractus, I'll pick Maractus. <laughs> I know, but then you got to pay attention enough to not complain that people in your chat aren't playing right when you're the one that is ruining the, the no, 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 super no. effective I... move. Tell people not to use the water move when I get Maractus. <laughs> yeah, after you remember, I have watched you many times when you're like, what? Why aren't they using water gun? And Chad has to say, because you brought a storm drain, Steve. Hey, I started off this I conversation have... saying people were bad at Pokemon. <laughs> There's no lies. Including no, you. No lies have been detected. <laughs> you also started off by saying, I play it professionally 24-7. I do oh, it as yes, an entertainment me, person. the Pokemon master, playing <laughs> for years. But even the even like the amount of times I've I've gone to into Landorus and I'm like, hey, we should maybe take the grass path, and people are like, ah, oh, Landorus is flying ground. It's like, yeah, one, Landorus doesn't know any flying type moves. Trust me, I've battled it eight million times. Two, it knows two ground type moves. One is bulldoze. One is earthquake, and. Grass Pokemon resist ground, and if you set up grassy terrain, not only do grass Pokemon resist ground, but grassy terrain halves the amount of damage from Earthquake and halves the amount of damage from Bulldoze for every Pokemon on the field. And it's very, very good against Landorus, and a lot of people don't know that. And we've I have failed my fair share of Landorus raids. I will say I think Dynamax Adventure is a better system than max raid battles in yes. the terms of being a bit more challenging and requiring you to think. But I don't think that max raid battles should go away or should be harder. I think there is a good balance between of like, this, this is a little bit harder, this is a little bit easier, but they could make it harder like they did with Mewtwo um or the five star Zeraora that was shiny was like harder right i'm almost positive yes but that was hard to find yeah but those were the two challenges like mewtwo and then like the shiny Zeraora, and there was really nothing you didn't really get anything from shiny Zeraora. it was just like bragging rights that you were able to beat it but it would f feel weird going into a future pokemon game if there wasn't this kind of co-op and right. I don't want I don't want to be one of those yeah. people that hang on to SOS forever or horde battles because that's what I always hear is like oh, I wish they would bring back horde battles I wish they would bring back SOS <laughs> those are mechanics that existed for either you know shiny hunting or mm -hmm. fast EV training or hidden abilities but that's totally different than a co op feature which I You're think right. does add a lot of value for this game and for future games if I can mm -hmm. say like. Hey, on Monday night, we're going to get a bunch of people together and we're going to play together. You know, kind of like an MMO. Yeah. Oh, you mean like Pokemon Go? Yeah. But better. <laughs> with a storyline. And Hey, listen, in Pokemon Go, you're the storyline. <laughs> it's a pretty bad storyline. Let's do the question below. Will, what do you envision the end game and single player post game content is going to be like in terms of what people can do after they beat the campaign? A lot of people want to play a little bit longer. So what do you plan on doing? Are you looking for additional updates or anything like that? I can't really say too much today, of course, but I do want to say it's not just the story and then you're done with the game. We've got a lot of content for players to enjoy after they finish the story. Also, for players who are really big fans of the battle system and the competitive scene, there's going to be a lot for them to engage with. I think that is a true response. Yes. Yeah. They're on season seven? Series? Series seven. Series seven. But season 12 of the game. So that means the rule. So seasons are monthly. So every season you can qualify for Master Rank, which gives you 600 battle points, three golden bottle caps, Dynite Ore, Armorite Ore, etc. And you can earn up to 1,200 if you place both single and double battles, battle points. But Series, where on Series 7, means rule changes. So for example, Series 1, you couldn't use a lot of G-Max Pokemon. Um, and like G-Max Lapras, I think, was introduced in Series 4. Four, and then series six was the ban 
uh, of like Incineroar and Rillaboom and Togekiss and Dragapult. And Series 7 added the Crown Tundra Legendaries, which is why Landorus is back. And so we know that Series 8 will be February, and we don't know the rules for that. We don't know if that's going to be another ban. We don't know if that's going to be like, guess what? You can use Mewtwo now, even though Mewtwo's not good. People would probably use like Kyogre Groudon because those are actually pretty decent. For players who are really big fans of the battle system and competitive scene, there's going to be a lot to engage with. That sentence is, is very, very true. Although they probably didn't expect a global pandemic, but I think right. they pivoted pretty well as we're having now the third player cup coming up, players cup coming up. A lot of content for people to enjoy after the story. That could be a reference to the DLC, but they have changed raids every month. Mm-hmm. There was the the post game storyline with Sword Bert and Shield Bert, or what, what are the Spoiler. names? Spoiler. <laughs> I think that still counts as just story. <laughs> there is what else can you do after you do the game you can go to the rose tower yeah explore the wild area i guess yeah because after you beat leon technically you open up all the weather conditions for the wild area because you can't i'm almost positive before you beat leon you're not allowed to get fog in the wild area at all no what yeah it's like there i think fog and then something else doesn't ever happen in the wild area until you beat leon are you making that up? No, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm hallucinating it, but <laughs> I think yeah, something along those lines. But there, there is a couple wild area things that are restricted until after you beat Leon. There's something else that you can do after you beat the game, huh? I guess yeah, you you, can't, you you can't get fog until you beat the what? Hey, see, you know what I've never done? I've I have never gone back to Piers Gym to battle Marnie. That's a thing you can do. Yeah, is it really? Yeah. Yeah, I've never done it. Me either, because I didn't know that that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, because she takes over as gym leader, right? But I don't know what Piers does. He's if a rock I'm, star, dude. I He's two in the world. I thought she was just outside, and he was still the gym leader. Am I? Oh, well, I haven't done it, so I don't know the I story. Done any, I mean, I think I've seen her outside. <laughs> Man, there's a lot that I don't remember. It's been a long... It's been a I mean, long... I guess... Catching Zashian or Zamazenta. Well, that's part of the Sorbert Shieldbird storyline. Yeah, you have. There's a whole thing you have to do to unlock her as a gym battle, and I don't think I've done that. You can complete your curry decks. That's another thing. Still, I've never done that. Oh, yeah, me. I'm so behind in Sword and Shield stuff, but I'm gonna get there someday. Yeah, I mean. What's going to happen is when they announce whatever the next iteration of the, the console-based games, Greg, yes. be wary of the words that you speak. <laughs> but whenever they sp- announce the next iteration of whatever the games are going to be for the console games, I will get a fire under me to complete yeah. everything in Sword and Shield so that I'll be ready for the next games. I mean, I spent two years breeding a shiny <laughs> bug team, and I'm, like, crawling through Pokemon Shield with it. Do you see Sword and Shield being a kind of jumping off point for future po- for the future of the Pokemon series? Because you're not only launching Sword and Shield, but also Pokemon Home, Pokemon Bank, and a lot of things coming up around it. Does it feel like this is a new era in the Pokemon series? All right, I'm a different guy this time. I'm Mr. What? Jinichi Mus- Masuda. Or, okay. Do you want to be Masuda? Greg, you be Masuda. I think it might be fair to say it's not a transition, but for example, at Game Freak, Omori-san is the director for these games. We're passing a lot of responsibility to the younger generation to kind of move the franchise forward. Also, being on the Nintendo Switch allows for new play styles, not just handheld, but also on the TV screen. I think it's definitely going to represent a new chapter for Pokemon. Pokemon game is appealing to like a younger crowd, like every Pokemon game is eventually somebody's first Pokemon game. Well, that's not what they mean by younger generation. It just means that Mr. Masuda is ready to retire yes. and hand off the reins on to somebody else. I know we've talked about this on the show before, but obviously that was probably a long time ago. And we brought up Masuda, and Masuda gets a lot of blame if anything in Pokemon goes wrong. <laughs> um, so Amori was the director of Sword and Shield. They were the director of Sun and Moon. um, And then they were also the director of Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. 
Um, so those were the three main games they directed. They've you know, obviously they were a producer on Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. They were a producer on Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. They were a planning director on X and Y. I don't know the difference between a planning director and a director, but whatever whatever that means. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. And then for Masuda, uh, they were a director on Crystal, although they weren't completely in charge of Crystal. They were a director on Ruby and Sapphire, on Fire Red Leaf Green, on Diamond and Pearl, on Black and White, on X and Y, and on Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. Those were the games Masuda was the director on. And Masuda has done a lot more than just direct. Obviously, Masuda did a lot of music. Um, they've done scenario plot. They've done story plot. They've done world design. Have done. They did all the music for Sun and Moon, X and Y, Black Two, White Two, Black and White, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Diamond Pearl, Fire Red Leaf Green, Ruby Sapphire. Let's go Pikachu. Let's go Eevee. So they didn't do music for Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. I'm sure they did some music, but they yeah. weren't in charge of like the entire soundtrack. Uh, there has been a lot of focus on collaborative play as well. I mentioned the raid battles already, but it feels like this one is trying to do a lot of multiplayer things. Was it important that Pokemon also be co- cooperative as well as competitive? And how much did you weigh those two sides of Pokemon? Yeah, I think it's more of a sense of getting a lot of players to play together. Maybe not necessarily cooperatively, but playing together in a game world, a shared kind of space almost. One of the cool things about Nintendo Switch is obviously you can take it with you. So you go out and maybe go to a friend's house and you can cooperate together like, oh, let's do a match now. And you take on this really strong Pokemon. But communication has always been a central theme to Pokemon. So having more ability to communicate, not just through traditional features, but also talking to each other while going up against a single opponent, that kind of cooperative stuff is definitely the focus. Then they should fix the YCOM. <laughs> oh. Yes. I mean, <laughs> Dynamax Adventure is like the better the better way it to is. connect. It like, absolutely is. Just give me an eight digit code. What's your code? All right, cool. We're together. We don't have to worry about friend codes or whether I can right. see you on a list. And also, seeing other people in the wild area is not the best experience. No, no. It would be nice if there was a way to find your friends easier. Oh, definitely. Again, whether there was like an eight-digit code of like, I want to enter this wild area, maybe next or game. Even even if there was a way to turn the YCOM to just friends list only, if there's just a, not everybody in the world, but there was a middle thing, like only people on my friends list, would be nice. Because trying to, like, we're all in the same area but it's randomly picking five people from the world to show me instead of the people who are on my friends list. It, it's so frustrating. I've definitely Especially, found friends in the wild area, yeah, though. Yeah, I have too, but by accident, <laughs> not because the game made it easy. It was like, all right, let's go, all go to the island. I'm going to be spinning. This is what I'm wearing. All right, you leave the wild area. Keep coming back in, back and yeah. forth. All right, we found back each other. Back and forth, back and forth. Okay, the game is finally chosen. Because it would be fun to be able to do more camping with people. Like, I might complete my curry decks if I did that. Yeah, that was kind of, like, the main thing is, I mean, seeing another person is cool, but you can't really do anything with them besides, like, talk to them and get, like, sausage from them. Um, Yeah. But they did design something to do with somebody, which is the curry. I mean, to be fair... It's easy to do if you're offline and in the same room together. That's true. That is true. That has just not been uh, a thing for for a bit. But just like every video game, it's more fun with people. And if I'm sitting there making curry by myself, it would be... It's just just a better experience. And um, at least for me, people that were watching my streams were not interested in curry... Uh, but until they saw me do it, and when we did find people in the area, and we were, we were all doing it together, other people were like, wow, this is cool, because you guys are doing it together. I want to do yeah. it together. Which is probably part of the reason why Sword and Shield is has done very well compared to past Pokemon games. One, in the sense that the Switch is incredibly popular. Yes. Um, but two, is because when you add, I feel, my opinion, when you add co-op, 
stuff to games, it is easier to get people to participate and be excited and extend the longevity of that because you're doing something with somebody else. Like an MMO, Greg. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. That's what I'm waiting for. 20... 2025, Pokemon World. I'm excited for it. On the Switch Pro 3X5. Last question here is, talking about Dynamax Adventure, how do you feel that changes the way players are going to approach Pokemon, and what sort of opportunities did you add to change the way people play Pokemon battles? It's going to add a whole new layer, a tactical element to the battles. We've had power-up gameplay features like Mega Evolution and Z-Moves in the past, but Dynamax is something that can be used with any Pokemon in the game. So that gives the chance for any Pokemon to shine in battle. It also kind of creates a situation where you have to read your opponent because you don't know which Pokemon they're going to power up in battle. So as a competitive player, how true is that? I mean, when you see the list of four Pokemon... How often are you actually surprised at which one Dynamax is? Mm. Is it 50-50? Is it like 25% of the time it's I didn't expect that? Like what what's your percentage? I think the thing is like you you have multiple Pokémon you can Dynamax, right? So if I'm looking at a team and I see they have a Grimmsnarl, I, I, I could probably say with confidence 99% of the time the Grimmsnarl is not going to Dynamax. <laughs> But also, like, the same with Dusclops. You know, Dusclops is a support Pokemon. It's normally there to set up Trick Room. Um, it might know Will-O-Wisp. It probably knows Nightshade. It might know a move to activate weakness policy, like Brick Break or Bulldoze or Shadow Sneak. But it's not there to do damage. But with that being said, I've seen top players specifically on the ladder. And when I say top players, I mean, like, top 100 in the world. I've seen a player... Dynamax their Dusclops because that was their win condition. They Dynamaxed it, they used Max Phantasm, and they were able to win in that situation. Is it rare? Oh, yeah, totally. I would say probably like 99.9% of the time you're not going to Dynamax Dusclops, but because you have the option to, it can still add a variance to the battle. And they, they, were, they, they won um, because they Dynamaxed the Dusclops. Uh, but when you see, like, certain Pokemon, you can expect those to Dynamax. Like, Gla- Glass Glass Treer is a probably going to be the Dynamaxer. Um, Charizard probably going to be the Dynamaxer. Metagross, uh, Cartana. Like, these are Pokemon that you can look at and go, yeah, they're probably going to Dynamax those. Or when you look at their team, you're like, well, how does their team beat my team? And this is probably the one they're going to Dynamax. So to compare that to older games, which I don't have that level of knowledge for compared to Sword and Shield, uh, I mean, if you saw Kangaskhan on a team in, <laughs> in yeah. like X and Y or Omega Ruby or Sun and Moon, you go, well, there's no way it's not running their Megastone. And if you, there were certain Pokemon like Tapu Koko where you were very, very confident that it was going to have a Z move attached to it, um, because that's just how the meta was at the time. There is always going to be some sort of gimmick to Pokemon. Even in in black and white, I guess the gimmick was um, the gems, the gem system. And that's why Tornadus... And Thunder, or not Tornadus. Yeah, Tornadus and Thunderous were pretty good because they would mm-hmm. run like one attack and it would be like Acrobatics, maybe Halucha too. And then Acrobatics was like stronger if the Pokemon wasn't holding a held item, I think. Yeah. So you would get the gem yeah, boost initially, so. it would consume the gem, and then the move would still be just as powerful. Um, so gems were kind of like baby Z moves. And as much as people still loved Mega Evolution, again, I talk about this all the time, but there was only like. 10 Pokemon that really took advantage of Mega Evolution. There were a lot more Pokemon that took advantage of Z-moves, or could take advantage of Z-moves. You could maybe make the argument that only X amount of Pokemon Dynamax, but I would probably say that's like triple the amount of Pokemon that could Mega Evolve. I mean, I, I have a team right now that has Porygon on it, and I have probably done... 
close to like 150 battles, but in the 150 battles, I have Dynamaxed Porygon once, and I Dynamaxed it in a posi- in a situation where I won. I won because I Dynamaxed Porygon, and out of 150 battles, I only did it once, but it, it, it worked, and I won with it, so I don't think Dynamax is going to last forever, though. I think there will be another gimmick in future games that they rely on, because I think the gimmicks are what sell the game right oh, yeah like people, the changes yeah people definitely. will always remember sword and shield you know in 20 years of that's the game with the big pokemon <laughs> just like you remember x and y as like that's the game that introduced megas and i guess you go well that's the game that introduced z moves <laughs> for sun and moon so I, I i think dynamax is is cool for now but i i, I expect it's not going to last forever yeah i agree that was our that was our looking back at an old article. Hopefully it was all right. We can move on to question of the week. Question time. Let's start off the new year with a great new question. Welcome to the first question of 2021. Make it good, Steve. Ah, there's a, there's there's a lot of good ones here. Maybe maybe we could speed run these. Go for uh, it. Let's do it. All right, let's go. Brandon, if you were at the Pokemon Company, you could make the event for the 25th anniversary. What would it be and how would it work? Thanks. That's a real speed run question. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) So, like, we're talking, like, not, like, okay, to limit this down, in-game event or, like, a a buy tickets to go to event? What should we want? I would say you do whatever you want. I would say in-game event. I've always okay. been so here I'll go first. I have always been a huge fan of in-game events that celebrate the anniversary and Pokemon Go has been really good at doing that every year uh, because they're like a live game. And so in the Sun and Moon era and before that, it just never seemed like they acknowledged those players uh, as as easy as it was of like Look, give us a free Decidueye or something. Give us something that we can download to like signify an anniversary. So in the realm of games existing now, that would probably be the best they could do. In future games, it would be cool if they could do what Masters does, or um, which is like update the Pokemon Center. Uh, yeah. And I think that would be a really, like not easy thing, but that would be really like nice if during events or during holidays... You know, at least the Pokemon centers throughout the region, they're all the same, uh, could be like decorated and stuff. Um, For this anniversary, I would, I don't know, I would expect what we're going to get, which is probably release date for Detective Pikachu, release date for Pokemon Snap, probably a trailer for an upcoming Switch Pokemon game, and then like two things that we have no clue what's happening. My thing for the 25 year anniversary, I, so you know how we all voted on the top 10 of each region? Yeah. On Google. Yeah. That for each month, those are all like one, like Kanto is, let's say, April. So all max raid battles, like they pick three from each for the, amongst the four weeks. And those are special max raid battles. Like they make those super cool. And then the next ones, so they switch to Johto and then Hoenn and all the way up to, to the end of the year. So like they take that list and make those uh, promoted raid, max raid battles. Uh, so you'd have like a region a month. I would do a uh, Pokemon ARG and it oh. just like have it be like there's a hidden clue in whatever announcement for like they do like a poster or something for celebrating 25 years of Pokemon and there's a little clue in there and then you follow the clues and you have like a full year to solve the ARG and then whoever wins gets to design the next a, a new Pokemon or something. There you go. ARGs, that stuff's real hot, right? Still? Yeah. The, uh, yep. Uh, next question. What? Uh, this is from Mark from our Slack. What or who would you which, like to see? Wait, which Mark? Because Mark I G. get confused. Mark G. Okay, that dude asks a lot of questions. <laughs> what <laughs> What or who would you like to see? Hey, they pay, they're paying for it. What or who would you like to see the Pokemon Company partner with in the future? I am holding out for a special Pikachu edition Tesla. Tesla? Dude. Hey. Heck uh, no. 
I want a much like a yokai watch event in FF14. I want a Pokemon event. I want to have 900 minions that I have to add, and all 900 have weapons that I can get. Minions? Uh, yeah. Oh, you mean not like the thing from the movie, not the thing with the, the one thing eye that's like, Rawr! no. Like the things that follow you. Yes. Much in line with Greg, I want a Pokemon Monster Hunter crossover. Yeah, that would be would cool. Would the weapons be Pokemon instead of like, I'm a horn player, I'm a Pikachu player, or well, no, are you replacing no, you, the monsters with po- Pokemon? No, you would have uh, armor and weapon sets that were themed on Pokemon. Oh, okay. Oh, I'd be into that. I've never played those games, but yeah. Well, Monster Hunter Rise coming out March 26, 2021. I'm gonna. I feel like we've answered this question. I'm gonna. I want to see some Pokemon in Mario Kart. They put Animal Crossing yeah. in it. They put Zelda in it. Let me. Let me drive a Pikachu. <laughs> let me drive it as Pikachu. Yeah. Or well, no. You let, want a Pikachu let me. Car? Let, me, you let want... me as Mario be on a Pikachu. <laughs> Do you want to be? Yeah. You want Mario at the back of Peach Pikachu, zipping around. We've all played Dash. We know how successful that would be. <laughs> yeah. It's a great game. Um. <laughs> So good. I do now that I've received um merch from Original Stitch. Uh yeah. which I full disclosure <laughs> partnered <laughs> with Original Stitch. They sent me the Cramorant shirt. Um it is so nice. And as somebody who spent with the two of you several days looking at dress clothing. And looking at prices and going to how many stores did we go to? Like a dozen. Uh, yeah, we went. To, we for sure went to ten. I wasn't keeping count. Um, they are so nice. The quality is is incredibly nice, and it's really cool that they are doing Hoenn next. I am excited. I might actually buy a shirt. Yeah, I, I love the skitty one. Um, have you have they have you seen them? Have you seen them? No, I, I've only seen no. the ones on the website. They've they've Boom. shown like ten uh Hoenn ones, and one of them is Skitty and the others are the starters, but the Skitty one is for sure my next one. Um but they're re- they're really nice. They're super expensive though. They're like a hundred dollars a shirt. Um which is it's that's they like should the should be nice at a hundred dollars a shirt. Yeah, they should be. That's like the same price at like a men's warehouse. But the difference is like yeah. men's warehouse is always on sale. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you play, you pay for the Pokemon tax, so I I do like that they keep collaborating with stuff. I just can't think of a, I can't think of a, like a brand. I can't think of like an IRL brand off the top of my head that isn't just like partner with a video game. Which is there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, Monster Hunter, yeah. Final Fantasy, Mario Kart. I'm just trying to think of like another, like they're partnering with the North Face, but we haven't. I don't think we've seen everything in that Ooh. collection yet. Ooh. Surly Did bike. you see Surly the clanging? Bike I agree with that because you know I, I'm yeah, not going to use bad language, but I love me some Surly bikes. But the uh, clanging and banging gear is now available in PokemonCenter.com. <gasps> yeah, I might buy some of that. What are you? I know. T- oh, the new workout gear. Yeah. What do you think clanging and banging means? At first, I thought I was like, are they selling weights? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they oh, sold dear. weights, I would make a home gym. I would need to find space to make. A oh, home they do gym, have active performance stuff. They do. I'm kind I, of. I in... received an email. What, what did they single me out because I'm the king of I, clanging and banging? I got the email too. I didn't. Wait, get did the I get this email? email. Oh, you should have. This is gonna be the Zarut. What was the email? It was it just po- it was Pokemon Center, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for New shopping. Active wear. Active wear. I don't think I got this email. I mean, I might get the jog. I normally don't like joggers, but I kind of like these. Well, you can always have them tailored. The yeah. last email I got was right before Christmas, and it was the Winter Fest for Kids. Maybe they think I'm like 12. Yeah. Yeah, You've fallen off the list. I kind of really, really want the active crew shirt. Like, I need another gym shirt. I mean, not that I'm going to the gym right now, but... Ring fit. I do do ring fit, except I hurt my foot, so I've been off doing anything until my foot heals. I thought we were speed running. Oh yeah, here. sorry. Last one is from uh, Mabel. 
Now that it's the year of the ox, will Pokemon Company finally give us our favorite bovines they love? They <laughs> Will Pokemon Company finally give us our favorite bovines the love that they truly deserve? Tauros, Miltank, and Bufalant. I can't think of a single bovine that deserves love in that list. Maybe it should Agreed. be the year of Boof. Oh, come Ooh. on. It is the year of the I, ox, though. Yeah, but you have 2012 tied them was kind of the year of the boof. Yeah. Yeah, but, Will, we can make the boof come back. I, you know, I'm kind of into this. I'm kind of into it, too. All right. This is the worst. I love the boof. Uh, the answer is no. They will not. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> speed run. No. Speed run. Pokemon of the week. Okay. The previous. Oh, dag nabbit. I had to close it when I restarted my computer. The previous week's Pokemon of the week was uh, I was in the Pokemon trivia contest and I had forgotten that this Pokemon existed. Um, even though it's been around for 25 years, good clue for you right there. Uh, I always forget that it's name, uh, and I made a reference to gumshoes there. And then, uh, I also mentioned that it's prior evolutions follow a naming convention, kind of like Gibble and Gabite, but instead of like Garchomp, the th one that I'm referring to here doesn't follow the same naming pattern. Um... And then I reference Giardos, and then there's a fact that its name refers to a story in, uh, I guess, the Jewish tradition, um, but that story is actually represented by different Pokemon, Golet and Golurk. Um, and then uh, it's, I mentioned that its shiny kind of looks like a nugget, but it's not related to Goldeen or Golduck. I, how much more clue could I give you guys? <laughs> what do you got? It's... Goldeen or Golduck? No. no. It's Golem. Golem, there you go. You forgot the... that Golem existed? I'm heartbroken. Yeah, because I, because, I mean, you get like a billion Geodudes in life. Yeah, true. And, and you have to trade it away. I Gravelers, mean, and then Golem is like, eh. It has an Alolan form. Yeah. Correct. True. Uh, the mustachioed, bearded joy that is Alolan Golem. No other Pokemon has the same type combination as Alolan Golem and its evolutionary relatives. The shiny is really good. Yeah, it's like a golden nugget. Yeah. The designer of Alolan Golem also made uh, Mega Beedrill, uh, the Honage line, the Pangoro line, Ty the Tyrant Amora line, Grubbin line, Drampa, helped on Ultra Necrozma, and in Sword and Shield, they did the Rookie D line, and they did all the fossils. Wow. Like every fossil ever? No, all the fossils in Sword and Shield. Okay. Maybe it should be one of the fossils from Sword and Shield this year. Which is the most derpy one? Well, the one no one likes is the all Arctovish. The yeah, it's the year of Arctovish. That's the all one right, that are you ready one. for... Uh, I'm going to state something controversial. Go for it. The Alolan Pokemon Shuffle icon is way better than the Kanto Pokemon Shuffle. Icon. I don't controverse you. I agree with you. The, Why did they the, feel the right, need to include the hands? The hands are bad and it looks like it's got weird lips. Yeah, it's not I good. I don't like it. It's not good. The Rumble Rush Alolan Golem is pretty it's so good, bad. though. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's so, so bad. bad it's good. The legs are like, what? Oh, man. Okay. What's, what's our next? You ready? The first the escape Pokemon of 2021 of Pokemon Shout of the out. Week. Here we go. No. I, I have to compose myself. <clears throat> okay. If you can remember my third wife's name, this week's Pokemon will be an easy guess for you. I was never able to tease her by calling her by this Pokemon's name because we were divorced about five years before its debut. 
I frequently think of this Pokemon as representing a diurnal cycle, and it shares typing with both of the true diurnal Pokemon, but it is actually representative of a different cycle, one that repeats approximately 12.3601 times every calendar year. Oddly enough, with its paired Pokemon, it does not represent full and new. As I have been looking into this Pokemon, I have found that there are three Pokemon that pretty much represent the same thing. Bonus points if you can figure out all three. One is ordinary, and two are legendary. There you go. Not, not too tough to start out the year. All right. Uh, well, we'll be back next week, uh, and I will be back on Twitch on January 8th, taking some time off to revamp some Twitch, give myself a break. Uh, there will still be YouTube videos this week. So every Monday, the podcast goes up on YouTube. And then every two, every Wednesday and Friday, another YouTube video goes up. Follow YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Twitch, all the same. P-K-M-N-C-A-S-T. Uh, Greg is at White Wing on Twitter. Will is at Wash in the Sink. Otherwise, Happy New Year. Thank you for listening. Uh, hopefully, we got a lot planned for the year with the 25th anniversary. So, hopefully, there's a... Uh, well, look. We can always find Pokemon things to talk about. We don't need the Pokemon company to give us any announcements. <laughs> yeah. We got this covered. We can make our own announcements. Uh, <laughs> but thank you for listening. Thank you for making it to the end. We will see you all next week. This has been another episode of the Pokemon Podcast, and we are... Super effective. Super year of the Sableye. No, 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 no. Come on. No. Sableye, Sableye is too cool. Don't tarnish it. This podcast is supported by our Patreon backers. If you would like to support on Patreon, you can head over to ise.cash to support us. A shout out to our producers of this episode, starting with Kevin, Brian, Steph, Braddy, Casey, Bovine, Patrick, Jetsy, Matthew, Kay, Courtney, Catherine, and our executive producers of Spencer and Anthony. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for listening. Thank you for making it to the end. And have a great rest of your week. <laughs>